You've heard of the famous granny square, but have you heard of the granny hexagon? I promise you it's just as easy and fun to make, and they look great on a finished garment like the one I'm wearing right now. So join me and I'll teach you how to stitch up this little cutie. Isn't this stylish jacket by Paintbox Yarns even more stunning up close? Look at those lovely neat stitches. And these hexagons actually remind me of gorgeous Mediterranean tiles you find on those hot summer vacations, right? You can find the free pattern for this Hex Year jacket in the description below. Now, if you've watched our tutorial on how to do a traditional granny square, the granny hexagon may be next on your list and rightfully so, it's another classic. We've linked our granny square tutorial below too if you've not yet given that a go. This granny hexagon consists of five rounds. The first two rounds creates a circle and from round three, we create the six corners of our hexagon. And I'll be showing you how to do this using Paintbox Yarns Cotton DK and a four millimeter hook. Let's get started. In your first color, we're going to start with a slip knot, hold the tail of your yarn on your left hand, and you're going to bring the working side yarn over to the left and form a little loop. And you're going to bring the working side again under and up through that little loop to complete your slip knot. And then you can just attach that onto your hook and pull the working side to adjust the loop onto your hook. Now, the pattern asks us to begin with three chains that will then join in the round to create a ring at the middle of our hexagon. So to start with our chains, you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull that through the loop on your hook to create your first chain. So there's one chain and again, yarn over, pull through the loop on your hook, two chains, yarn over and again pull through the loop on your hook and there's my three chains. And like I said, we're going to form a ring and to do this we're going to insert our hook into the very first chain that we made to make a slip stitch. So insert your hook into that first chain, you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through the chain and the loop on your hook to complete your slip stitch and to create your ring for the middle of the hexagon. So we're going to, for round one, work in the middle of this ring. It might be a little bit difficult to see where the middle is, but if you just shuffle your chains about, you should be able to find a little space in the middle of your ring to work into. So round one, we need to chain three, one, two, three, and this counts as one US double crochet. That's one UK treble crochet here and throughout at the beginning of every round. Now we need to create 11 US double crochets, that's 11 UK treble crochets into the middle of the ring. And again, it may be a little bit difficult to find the middle. It doesn't really matter which hole you go through in the middle, we're gonna crochet around it. So it doesn't need to be super precise, especially if you're working with finer yarn. So to create your double crochet, you're going to yarn over, you're going to find a hole in the middle of the ring. And you're going to insert your hook into that hole and you're going to yarn over again 
and pull up a loop from the middle of your ring. And now you should have three loops on your hook. To complete your US double crochet, you're going to yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So there's how you do your US double crochet, UK treble crochet. And again, I'm gonna show you that one more time. Yarn over, insert your hook into the same space you went through for the first double crochet. Yarn over, pull up a loop from the middle. You should have three loops on your hook. Now yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. So I'm gonna continue to do those into the same space until I've done 11 double crochets in total, not including those three chains you created at the beginning of round one. Yarn over, put your hook through the middle, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and so on. So I've done my 11 double crochets, and now to complete round one, I need to create a slip stitch into the third chain that I created at the beginning of the round. So find the third chain, one, two, three, insert your hook into that chain. So under the two little legs of the chain, and then yarn over, pull through the chain and the loop on your hook all at once to complete round one. So round one should consist of 12 stitches. The three chains that count as one double crochet and then the 11 double crochets you created all the way around. And now we're going to finish off with our first color. So cut off your first color and you're going to finish off by yarn over and you're gonna pull that tail right through the loop on your hook. And you can pull that end to secure round one. Round two is gonna be worked in the spaces between the double crochets of round one. So not through the chains at the top of your work, into the space between the bodies of your double crochets. So we're going to attach our second color into any one of these spaces. So just take your new color, insert your hook into any of these spaces. I'm going to insert it into this space here. I'm going to attach my second color to my hook and just pull the end right through that space. And then I'm just gonna tie that to the first round to secure it. So we're ready to start round two. Insert your hook into that same space and you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop from that space. And again, at the beginning of every round, we need to make three chains. One, two, three. For round two, we're simply going to do two double crochets into each of the spaces in round one. So 
Because our three chains counts as one double crochet, we're gonna create another double crochet into this same space. So yarn over, insert your hook into that same space, yarn over, pull up a loop from that space, and you should have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So again, in the next space between your stitches, you're going to create two double crochets. Yarn over, put your hook through that next space, Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And again, another double crochet into the same space. So essentially you're increasing stitches for round two. So at the end of this round two, we should have 24 stitches all the way around. So I'm going to continue to do my two double crochets into every space between the double crochets of round one. And I should have my 24 stitches all the way around and I'm going to slip stitch into the third chain at the beginning of my round to complete it. And I can finish off the exact same way that I've been doing. And there's round two done. These two rounds created the circle for the middle of our hexagon. From round three, we need to create the six corners of the hexagon. And from this round, we're going to be working into the spaces between each two double crochet cluster. Insert our new color into any one of those spaces. So here's my next color. We're going to insert, attach it to any one of the spaces between the two double crochet clusters, the same way as I've been doing. And I'm gonna tie that for round three. So again, to begin round three, I'm going to pull up a loop and chain three. One, two, three. And into this same space where I've created my three chains, I'm going to create one, double crochet. Now I'm actually going to create my first corner of my hexagon into the next space between the two double crochet clusters. And to make a corner, all you're going to do is you're going to create two double crochets into this space. Then you're going to chain two and create another two double crochets into the same space. So I'll show you how to do this now. So we're going to yarn over into the next space. You're going to create two double crochets. And now we need to chain two, and these 
two chains that are what creates the corners of our hexagon. So chain two, and we're gonna create another two double crochets into the exact same space. So there's my first corner of my hexagon done. So you're going to repeat that all the way around for round three. So create two double crochets in the next space, two double crochets in the next space, chain two, two double crochets in the same space to make the corner. So I'm going to go through that again to show you. So next, after my first corner, I need to make two double crochet cluster in the next space. So two double crochets in this space. One. Two. And in the next space, we're going to create the second corner. So we need to make two double crochets. chain two to create the corner and another two double crochets in the same space. And there's your second corner done. So you're going to repeat that all the way around. So here you can see that you should end with your last corner in this space here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and I'll meet you back here when I've done that. Last corner done. So I'm going to slip stitch into the third chain at the beginning of the round as I've been doing and I'm going to finish off. So you can see those two chain spaces created these cute little corners of my hexagon. And for round four, I'm going to start working from any one of the corner spaces from round three. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach my next color to any of these chain spaces. And again, beginning of round four, we're going to chain three. And we've attached our next color in the corner, which means we need to continue making the corner on this round. So I'm going to do one double crochet. So now that counts as two double crochets with my three chains at the beginning. So I'm going to chain two for the corner. And I'm going to make another two double crochets into the same chain space. And there's my first corner of round four. Now you'll notice after every round, the amount of double crochet clusters you make before you reach the next corner will increase by one on each side. So you can see on round three, we have one double crochet cluster before we get to the corner. So for round four, we're going to have two double crochet clusters before we get to the corner. So two double crochets 
in the next space, two double crochets in the next space, and then that's when you reach the corner. So I'm gonna do my two double crochets in the next space. One. Two. And another two double crochet cluster in the next space. One, two, and now we've reached the corner. So two double crochets into this corner space. One, two, and remember to chain two for the corner. One, two, and another two double crochets into the same corner space. One, two. So there's my second corner of round four done. So I'm gonna continue to do this all the way around and I should end with my last two double crochet cluster into the space before the corner I made at the beginning of the round. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the third chain that I made at the beginning of the round as I've been doing. And I'm gonna do this now and I'll meet you back here when I've done that. I finished round four and again, I attached my next and final color for my final round five in any of the corner spaces of round four. So now I'm gonna chain three at the beginning of every round. And I'm going to finish this corner. So one double crochet into the same corner space. Chain two for the corner and another two double crochets into the same space. And now, before we get to the next corner, we're going to create our two double crochet clusters in the next three spaces before we get to that corner. So two double crochets in the next space. Two double crochets in the next space. And two double crochets in the next space. And again, we've reached our corner. We're going to do two double crochets into this corner space. Chain two for the corner. And another two double crochets into the same corner space. And so on. So I'm gonna continue that all the way around for my final round. And again, I should end with my very last two double crochet cluster before the corner I made at the beginning of the round. And I'm gonna slip stitch to the third chain that I made at the beginning. I can go ahead and finish off now. And there's my lovely five rounds done. So naturally, 
with all the color changing that we did, we're gonna have loads of little ends at the back of our work. So we want to sew them in or weave them in because we don't want it to be poking out at the front of our work. So what you're gonna do is with each little tail, you're going to thread your yarn needle with them. And then you're just going to sew them in under the loops of the stitches at the bottom of the stitches. So this is round one. I'm just gonna go under the loops around that ring. Just a few of those loops. And then what you want to do to make sure that your yarn tails are really secure, you want to go back from the way you came. So you're going to miss the last loop you went under, go under the next loop and go all the way around again under those loops. And you can repeat this as many as as many times as your tail allows. So I'm going to go back again one more time. And I'm quite happy with how secure that is and I can just snip off the excess tail. And you're gonna just repeat this with the other round, so exactly the same. You're going to thread your yarn needle with your next end. And then under the little loops at the bottom of your clusters, you're just gonna go under those. And you're gonna go back from the way you came. So skip the last loop you just went under and go under the next one and back under the loops you just came from. And one more time. And I'm gonna snip that off again. So continue to do that with all your little yarn tails until you have a nice, neat back with no ends poking through the front. And that's how you crochet the easy peasy granny hexagon. You're ready to crochet lots more and whip up a stunning finished project. You've nailed all of your granny hexagons and have them all stacked up, ready to finish that amazing project. Now, how do you join them all together? Well, click on our watch next video appearing on our screen right now, and my crafty bestie Marion will teach you how. Don't forget to like this video, drop us a comment below, and subscribe to the Lovecrafts channel for more. Happy crocheting!